bats last year. I think they tried. So the way that it at least has come out over time, over the last six years, it's, yeah, it seems like shorter than really it has been. But the six years that McKenzie has been the general manager, his tack has consistently been get in early, draw your line, and do not budge. And that's what happened, you know, with Khalil Mack. He got in early, and let's say his offer was $18, $19 million. That's still trumping over somebody like Von Miller, but it's not it's not $23 million a year, you so, know? And in the more, end... So what you're describing what you're, to me is a, a Kawhi Leonard situation, except yeah, for without a ring. That's the best foil for what just happened. Except for with no rings involved. So that... Well, that no as, rings and no... No bad talking. No rings uh, and no culture to fall back on. And that's why I'm so upset because it's like, yeah, I see the the Kawhi parallels, but at least the Kawhi, the Spurs have a culture to fall back on. They have rings to fall back on. I, as a Raider fan, is, I don't I don't have it. And it's like, it's it's really rocked me to my every core. Every other team has pass rushers except the, the well, Raiders. Well, I'll put it like this to, to put a nice little neat point on it. You know, Pete, you've stressed to me. How much you believe that the Raider brand is a global is a global brand, and that there is a kind of Raider way to going about things. In in, in the end, that's what they that's what Gruden banked on is that the way that he's going about this is going to be a better way than the way that was previously gone. That the way that people have previously gone about this. And while again, like I said, you know, I'm not I don't enjoy it. I would much rather have Khalil Mack on the team than not. There's a clear line of logic that is incon- an inconvenient truth, but a truth nonetheless. I mean, I, I, so I see what you're saying, to- but but ultimately, uh, to even go back to your point, the the as far as a contender, the the Raiders are as close as, depending on your opinion of Derek Carr. Frankly, if you think he's in the middle yeah. of the pack, they're going to be a below average to 16. average team. If you think he's elite, like we've seen glimpses of, then he might be more. But no, yeah, that's fair. As far as as far as everything else, man. Well, uh, here's the here's the depressed. one thing that maybe a lot of us are struggling to see because the season hasn't begun yet. But maybe why Gruden ultimately felt, and it's not just Gruden. That's also the other thing that I, I hope people understand is that if you think Mark Davis been tip the cap and say, okay, yeah, let's do this. And if you think Reggie McKenzie didn't, even if he ultimately had no say, if you don't think he fell in line, like, you got to wake up smell the roses. Like, Mark, Mark definitely had thing. a play in it because I, I think even Marcel as well, he has talked about, you know, owners have a big play in, in this it's because – money, of course. <laughs> bes- besides that, but it, it, it's, it's you know, it, it's a relationship. So it, it, if – Yes. If you Absolutely. have that that connection, if you have that marketability, and your owner's willing to go that extra mile, then it'll happen. And that's my issue. As far as me being a diehard Raider fan, this is why I'm at a crossroads right now. Is because when I, I think you? about it, Al would have got this deal done. Maybe, and, and maybe uh, not. Because what if I told you? Here, here's here's what I'm gonna lay at your feet. Right. It now. sounds like the beginning of a thirty for is, thirty. <laughs> what if I told yeah, you? I know. Well, if it, if it sucks, it. then if if this is like the worst trade in NFL history, then it will be. But Herschel what if I Walker? told you that we have the best coaching staff that maybe we've ever had on, uh, for, like from top to bottom? That's a solid point. That's a push because I mean, so that, Gruden hasn't won I'm not in sixteen saying that years. It is the case because we haven't even got to week one yet? Right, week one starts tomorrow. We the mm. Raiders don't even play until. Monday, the late game, right? So yep. anything can happen. And weird things happen that first game. Not saying there won't be takeaways, but grain of salt the whole way around, right? But if Gruden is looking at his team right now and saying, we can coach these guys up to maybe go out and at most win nine games, and that's if every, if every single one of our coaches is among the best in their, in their circle for the guys that they coach, then in the end, is it really that crazy to go, you know what, we're not going to be able to pay this guy anyway? Because if he's going to miss games, if he misses even one game, then you lose leverage. You lose trade leverage right away. Now you, now it's like a flare. It's like when Kawhi Leonard, to follow through that metaphor, said, no, trade me. Once he said that, that, that means you lose all leverage with all the teams that think that they may have a chance 
regardless whether they're on the list of teams or not. You just lose leverage, categorically, right? That's why Le'Veon Bell isn't getting traded anytime soon. That's why Earl Thomas is getting traded, even though he, he reported today. At the end, if he's down, and we don't know what Siegel said, but if he's down to straight up just miss time, then you, you, you have to make a decision, a very clear-cut decision that Raiders fans, including myself, didn't want to admit to, but if he says, line in the sand, you either have to pay me or I'm going to start missing games, then you have to take a long, hard look at your payroll and say, can we survive a $13 million hole that's not playing here? And John Gruden said, you know what? We probably can. Because I don't think that Gruden did this to intentionally turn the team into a 6-10 and nightmare like we watched last week, last year. Does it bother you that John Gruden, after 16 years of – and he – to be historically honest and accurate, he won a Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's players. And I don't when, believe in that. He to did. Be honest. He inherited Warren Sapp. He didn't draft Warren Sapp, John Lynch. I mean, I think like we watched had... Bill Callahan that you can't just go and walk into a Super Bowl win with he, a roster somebody else built. You that still was crazy. Go he, team. he changed the play. He changed well, Bear Robbins. Like a lot of stuff happened with that Oakland situation, but. To give this man $100 million over 10 years, knowing you still need to pay Mac after you gave Carl a lucrative contract that, and cashed out Del Rio? Do I, you, I'm, not, I'm, not, you I'm not too concerned about the Raiders' cash flow. We're still, in the end, the, the, we might like to play like Mark Davis is a poor owner, but that's only because and our, our notions of the stratification of wealth uh, can't, can't really compare because none of us are sitting on you know, half a billion dollars in assets uh, for one thing, half a billion dollars in assets is, in another thing. So, like, it could be easy for him to go get a bank note from some Nevada state bank to say, all right, you give me $20 million, so I can only, I only have to put up $20 million, I'll give you that $20 million in two years. Like, but but that logic, why, didn't, why wouldn't you pay Mac? Why would you give all this money? And, like, I think Reggie McKenzie, like, would you just – Based it off Reggie McKenzie's contract and where things have gone, his draft history, he's missed on a lot of people. <clears throat> but this yeah, does, it, does this feel like the death knell? The death knell for you? Like it feels like when you give a guy a ten year, hundred million dollar contract, he's the future, along with your quarterback who you gave a long term contract to. Which, by the way, if we look at how Kirk Cousins and Alex Smith contracts turned out, it might have been more mm-hmm. flexible for Derek Carr to be paid, let's say, this year. Like, do you but ever think that the, maybe that, if you, like, just in hindsight, was, you was guys that? Remember, do you guys remember that Derek Carr didn't show up to OTAs last year? Yep. That, that, that was, a, that was a, a conversation about whether or not he would end up holding out for the entirety of the, of the offseason. So it wasn't, and, I, you know, I read, I read something, uh, damn, I really wish I could remember the, the name of the link, but uh, I remember, um, or rather, I read something earlier today that talked about this very same thing about the the misfortune of hitting on a pass rusher and a quarterback in the exact same draft and in the order that you wouldn't want to. So, if Khalil Mack had been a second round pick, then you know what? He's still on the Raiders right now because his number, his overall number, even amid all the things that he's done, will be lower because now you know what you're getting him. It's the same thing for Aaron Donald being a defensive tackle. You're getting him from $8 million, which is just the defensive tackle market, up to eleven. That's already a massive jump just for his position alone, right? Mack was getting $13 million a year. He was already pretty close to the market level in the first place. So in acknowledging that this guy wants to reset the market, which he did, you're also going to have to go a $10 million increase in what this guy's making. And while I would the emotional part of me is down to give him whatever he wants. Like the reality of it is the team's just not good enough to survive it. The Rams are, so they are, they so won their division. So, so let, right let me ask you this, regardless of who we believe is running the team, whether you believe it's Gruden, McKenzie, or some combination of both, regardless of who's running the front office, after this decision, how do you feel about contract negotiations moving forward? Because, Amari Cooper's coming up, and if he has a breakout year and gets back on track, we could be headed towards another similar situation. Mack and Cooper have the same agent, by the way. 
I, Ooh, uh, yeah. I didn't even know that. That's major. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's major. That's been floating around the ding, ding. floating around the the web lines, and I, I would say this: I wouldn't buy a Cooper jersey, but I also purposely did not buy a Mac jersey. I'll say that. Uh oh. Um, in the end, <laughs> I, <laughs> well, because you know, I you know, I just for example, jer- just using the jersey line for a moment, like. I don't buy the jerseys of players that are still playing if I can help it. I have a Woodson jersey, but I yeah. I bought that jersey, you know, two three years ago, uh, right when he came back, when it was very clear that he's going to just retire with the Raiders. Fair. And that's not because he wasn't my favorite athlete of all time. He has he has been, but at the same time, it's a business. And if you forget that, if the players forget that, then they get burned. You know, that's why Le'Veon Bell is probably not going to report Week One, and he's. Ah. I underst- arguably a better player even than Mac is, you know, but I understand I mean, you, you what you're saying one hundred percent. The only issue that I have with it is the fact that the only reason why I even bought these jerseys, the only like, yeah, this is a business, but it's built a business built on emotions. It's built on people attaching themselves to and trust stuff that's not real. So the emotional no, still comes to it. You're and, right. And and for me you're not wrong. These these three right. people Carr, Mac, and Cooper were sold to me as the, as the future, as the face, and they were until Khalil Mack said, "He got nah, Thanos. man, I got to make at least twenty-two million dollars a year." No, he <laughs> he got he said, "I need to be paid market value for what I am," and I think it would have been easier. The Raiders would have had more leverage if they pressed Derek Carr to hold out than Khalil Mack because you're going to trade your franchise QB. That no, would have brought, no, that you're, probably you're, gave them more first round picks and way more leverage. Absolutely right. But here's the flip side to that: is when DC signed his contract, it was the highest paid for like what a week, and then Andrew yeah. Luck <laughs> yeah, got eclipsed. Sure. So if I'm Khalil Max agent, I'm saying, oh, dog, I just peeped this whole situation yeah. out. I just need to, I just need to hang on, and it's going to get tough and it's going to get ugly. But somebody's going to pay me more than whatever Aaron Donald makes before I even know what Aaron Donald makes. I mean, and again, you know, you look at the Rams and they've coughed that up, but they're also they don't have to deal with Goff for what another two or three years. Goff's on what his second now, entering his third year, so that means he has next year and then a, another fifth year contract option for for the for the team. Like, it's not even close to the same situation where they can legitimately talk themselves into believing that they're a lot closer, whether or not they are. Because by the time he's in the middle, right smack dab in the middle of his contract, and I'm certain that there are outs in the last two two years of that contract. But by the time he's in the middle of that, like he, you know, Goff is maybe getting paid if he's if he even has a year close to what was Carr's year two years ago. Fair enough. So it's 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 a tough situation to be sure. That's the bad luck of being of having a really good draft. It's what Seattle is dealing with right now, right? Where they have a whole bunch to hit on a whole bunch of guys back to back to back to back. You know, the first the first guy to kind of break off from that group was Irvin, but in the end, it was just a forebearer for what was coming. Um, and what has been the case definitely over the, the past year at least, but it's probably going to end up being why Earl Thomas is not going to retire uh, a Seahawk. You know, in the, in the end, if you draft well, then this is what we all want. But if you draft well, you got to make tough decisions with really, really good players because you can't pay them all. You know, I don't. I don't agree with the notion that paying Amari Cooper is somehow uh, uh, a referendum on on Mac. It's just timing. You know, if this had been a year down the line when they're sitting on thirty four million dollars in cap space, then it's much easier to be like, you know what, we can do this, and we'll give you forty million right now, and give you like I don't know some absorbent number uh, uh, off the cap this year because we're not gonna have to worry about it next year. That's not possible right now. Well, we're well, talking about two guys taking a quarter of the cap, a quarter of the cap with with the hundred million dollar head coach. That's true. But last question for me, in terms of how this situation played out, and how the players found out, and when they found out, and how close to the first week they found out, what do you really think this does for those defensive players who realize, oh, if that happened to Mac, the same thing's going to happen to me? And how do you think that affects future free agents? We even might even be thinking about coming to Oakland. I mean, now that Max not there, it's kind Vegas. of hard. I mean, Vegas, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. How do you think that's going to affect I mean, fu- the defense I'm, and future players? I would say this for any anybody 
joining the squad in route to like within a year of or after going to Vegas, the only thing they're thinking about is the ta- the the taxes. To be honest, like any vet that's trying to get on this team, assume. 